between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, let's just pray for wisdom for our leaders, protection of our servicemen. Most of all, just pray that God's Spirit may break forth upon our leaders and really transform their hearts. Um, the others? Yes. Um, the She needs another biopsy done on Tuesday. Oh, her daughter? Oh. All right. Sorry. No, don't be sorry. That's so hard. Remember to pray. <laughs> well, as we prepare our hearts for prayer, let's. Um, sing the hymn Hiding in Thee and then we'll stand and look to the Lord in prayer and let's remember these needs together. We would especially lift Amy up to you this morning and her whole family. We know what a strain and stress this is. We know that you are able to begin the healing already and we're just trusting you to do great and wonderful things. We would pray for the leaders of our country this day as we're facing new challenges which could even lead to war. We would just pray both for the wisdom for our leaders, for protection for our troops, 
And we would just ask that most of all, your name would be honored and glorified. We would just pray for our church this morning. You know the many needs that we are dealing with. And we would just ask that you would reach down in love and touch. Give us your wisdom and the ability to be able to do your will in the community in which we're living. Now we would just pray this day that our hearts and minds would be focused on you. Oh, it's so easy to lose sight of things. May we just remember that you are the source of all hope. You are the source of salvation. You are the source of protection. Will you guide and have your way in all that's said and done? Your holy name we do ask it. Amen. Thank you. I'll be reading this morning from the prophecy of Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, and I'll begin reading at verse 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals, and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doing. Precious Heavenly Father, as we call upon your name this morning, we would just pray that you would guide us into a deeper understanding of what your word has to say to us. Your holy name we do ask it. Amen. You know, day by day we put our trust in a lot of things that we may not totally understand. Most of us don't give much thought as we drive across a bridge to think, well, did the person who designed this really know what they were doing? Is it put together right? You know, I mean, we just take by faith that uh, we can cross the bridge and everything is going to be all right. I know when we ride an elevator, we don't take time to question, uh, is this going to let me off at the floor where it's supposed to, or is it going to stop and some other authorized location. Um, I don't think any of us gave much thought this morning when we turned on a light switch. We may not understand how the electric got there, but we just, you know, use it without going. But so many times we find ourselves trusting in things that we shouldn't be trusting in. I think one of the movies I've always enjoyed watching, have seen it many times, and Back to the point that Valerie says, do you think perhaps it will end differently this time, you know, <laughs> which it never has. But I love to watch uh, Armageddon, which is the, a movie about an asteroid on a collision course with Earth, and some oil drillers are sent by NASA to drill a large hole in the middle of the asteroid and blow it up with a nuclear weapon and, you know, save the world, which, by the way, they do. All that aside, the, the one particular oil driller, um, he was known as Rock Hound. He was a great geologist, but not uh, somewhat of a negative outlook. And I loved the line that he spoke as they were fastening him into his seat on the space shuttle. He said, you know, we're sitting on four million pounds of fuel, one nuclear weapon, in a vehicle with 270,000 moving parts assembled by the lowest bidder. <laughs> well, that, that isn't a real, uh, that just sort of, uh, you know, puts things in a little bit of perspective. Jeremiah, though, in this prophecy this morning, is saying so many things that people put their trust in are seemingly just as ridiculous as, you know, like I said, I, I always think of the space shuttle as a relatively safe vehicle, but, you know, uh, when you put it in his perspective, eh, you see it, you know, just a little bit differently. Jeremiah reminds people, when we put our trust in people, 
we are always opening ourselves up to disappointment. When we put our trust in man, he compared it to a shrub in the desert. I know I we used to live in what was technically considered a desert area. Oh, but as long as you were in town and near irrigation ditches, everything was green. But once you got out of town, you had bare sand, rocks, you know, and you had these little shrubs growing up that, in, in all honesty, if you needed to build a campfire, the twigs probably aren't big enough to really uh, do much, you know, one quick flash and it's done, and you know, what have you. But the desert, with all its beauty, and it is beautiful to look at, but it's not an inviting place to live. Everything in the desert struggles for survival. Whether it's a plant, some that only bloom every few years when there's sufficient rain, or others who, uh, you know, can actually go dormant and be brought back to life with rain, it, it is a struggle to live. In this passage, the prophet tells us, if we are putting ourselves where we're struggling to live, putting our trust in men, we will very quickly be defeated. But the opposite is also true. Those who trust in the Lord are like a tree that's planted by the water. Think about that when there is a good source of water flowing. Trees put their roots down and they go deep into the soil to where they can find the water which will provide them the nutrients and what they need to survive. And yes, if it's a hot day, it doesn't matter. Its source of water is coming from deep below, even where it's not seen. And then it is equipped to stand. It also helps the tree to be anchored in the wind. I've often seen that when your tree is growing where it's native to growing. Oh, I know, we see trees blown over in the woods here. But as a whole, if a tree is growing in its natural habitat, the wind blows, the storms come, and it just stands there and keeps on growing because it's in its natural place. I have seen when we were living in California that sometimes trees were planted that would grow because of the temperate climate, but their root structures weren't the way the same tree is here. I remember um, seeing a, a maple tree that someone had planted in the apartment complex where we were living. It looked beautiful. But when the wind came, because a maple tree is used to having its roots go deep into the ground, there it had to depend on just the water that came from when you were watering the grass. So its roots were close to the top of the soil. And when the wind came, it was over. And the oaks that were grown naturally in the area, they survived. But we, when we put our trust in the Lord, we're dependent. We're like the tree that's planted by the water. We have a solidness to our life. We're not cast about by every thought and whim that comes across our mind. Verse 9 raises a very interesting verse here. It says, The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? And this reminds us, when we are dependent on our own thoughts, on our own way of doing things, we are not being guided by the true source of life, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice it says the heart is devious. Sometimes we think we want something, but it's not necessarily what's for our good. It is for what? To satisfy what's going in our heart. What is really the root of sin when we pursue on our own what we want instead of being focused on what God wants? Now we know all sin is evil. We know all sin has its root in Satan. However, however, Satan doesn't tempt us 
to do something that our heart is not already thinking about doing. The heart is perverse, and when we trust our own judgment, we will very quickly be led astray. We're struggling to survive. I was reading in a devotion this week uh, from 2 Chronicles 14 to 16. It talks about the reign of King Asa of Judah. Asa was a very good king. He brought healing to some of the practices of some of the corrupt kings that had ruled before him and even took down some of the pagan statues. He really was considered a man whose heart was right in God's eyes. But Asa had a problem. The longer Asa reigned, the more Asa began to trust in Asa and tried to work things out for himself. You may remember previously following the reign of Solomon, Israel was divided into two nations, Judah and Israel. And David's line continued to rule over Judah. A multitude of different kings ruled over Israel. Asa was one of the descendants of David, ruling over Judah. And the nation of Judah and Israel were actually often at war with one another. And when King Baasha of Israel sought to fight against Judah, Asa began to look at the situation. But Asa made one big mistake. It said he made an alliance with the king of Egypt and did not call on the name of God. Now, it did not change that he was a righteous man, but shortly after that he was visited by a prophet who said, what is this, that you put your trust in a pagan king instead of in the God who established your throne? the God who has promised to keep you for all eternity. And it says shortly after that, Asa developed a disease in his feet, and he was unable to even fulfill all his kingly responsibilities. It was turned over to his son Jehoshaphat. Now please don't let me think, don't let anyone think for a moment that I'm saying if you're sick, it's because of a sin. But the implications of this verse here is the fact that he was stricken with this disease so he would turn his heart back to seeking the things of God. But there's the note there, he put all his trust in physicians and never called on the name of God. Again, I'm not saying we shouldn't use physicians. We, we should. But our trust and healing comes from the hand of God. Asa put his focus on men and lost sight of what God wanted him to do. It's important that our trust is in the Lord. When we put our trust in other people, we are always going to be disappointed. Why? We've already said the heart is devious above all. That's not just our heart. That's everyone else's heart. And when we put our trust in people, we are sure to be eventually disappointed. Why? Because they are still under the influence of a perverse heart. Only the heart that is changed by the blood of Jesus can truly be in tune with what he has to say to us. So dangerous, and I know it was an extreme example, but I think many of us, I know there's fewer and fewer can remember it, but in uh, 1979 there was a man who was once a strong Christian pastor that something happened. And I'm talking of Jim Jones who literally led a whole group of followers to their death 
because he encouraged them to drink poison as some sort of service to God. Listen, th this was a man who once was a powerful minister of the gospel. I knew people that attended his church when he was in Indiana, and he was a solid speaker. I'm not, I don't know what happened, I don't know when it happened, but I know that over 900 people went to their deaths because they put their trust in an individual instead of putting their trust in the power of God. Listen, the only one that we can trust for our salvation is the Lord Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made for us on the cross of Calvary. We can't put our trust anywhere else. When we look to other people, we will almost assuredly be disappointed. I don't care how often, how much, how good someone may sound, our trust has to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it is anywhere else, we are going to fall and falter. He gave us his word. He gives us the Holy Spirit. You know, it doesn't really matter what another person says to us. Now, I know God sometimes speaks to us through another person. I'm not discrediting that. But, as a whole, our trust has to be in Him. If we don't put our trust in Him, we don't always take responsibility for our choices. Who's ultimately responsible for us sinning? We are. We can't blame someone else. Oh, I know we live in a world today where everyone thinks there is a reason for everything to happen. And there's got to be someone to sue or something else for everything that happens. Actually, that started way back in the Garden of Eden. You remember when Eve was tempted to uh, partake of the fruit that was forbidden. Uh, and then she gave it to Adam, and when God questioned Adam, Adam said, Well, the woman, the one that you gave me, she persuaded me to eat the fruit. And then God said to Eve, Who, you know, why did you do this? Well, the serpent tempted me. Now let me tell you, if the snake starts talking to me, I'm, I'm out of there. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's either. All that aside, however, what do we see there? No one wanted to take responsibility for the sin that was in their own heart. And guess what? We have no one to blame but us. I know temptation can be heavy. I know we live in a sinful world. But it is still up to us when we choose to sin against God. Our trust needs to be in Him. We can't blame anyone else for what we do wrong. We also can't take any shortcuts outside of finding Jesus to find our hope. You know, a lot of people do a lot of religious service, but religious service doesn't get us into heaven. A relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because His blood covers our sin. That is our hope. And that is where our trust needs to be. Listen, there are all kinds of things going on in the world around us. I think we all know when we put our trust solely in people in Washington or something like that, we get real disappointed real quick. But we are in the hands of Almighty God. And if our trust is in Him, He's there to provide us salvation. He's there to protect us. He's there to lead us. He's there to keep us encouraged. Where's your trust today? Yourself is a real bad place if you're depending on that. Why? Because your heart is devious above all else. Let us put our trust in the one.
who really can take care of all of our needs, spiritual, <coughs> physical, emotional. Precious Heavenly Father, as we call on your name this morning, we are grateful for all that you do for us day in and day out. We know that we do need more of you day by day. We need to walk closer to you day by day. And we would just ask this morning that you would help us to really focus on who are we trusting, in who are we trusting. And may we truly look to you as the author and perfecter of our faith. I'd like us to stand together this morning, sing in closing hymn number 565, He Never Has Failed Me Yet.